ever. That's for sure. And it's all thanks to my new gluten master here. And I <laughs> love that machine. And we're going to show you how it's done. We are going to start out making a pre-ferment, in this case, a poolish. So this is like a two-day or three-day process. We will walk you through that. But we have also an episode there where you can see a pizza from scratch, you know, to a fantastic pizza in just two hours. Yeah, that's for sure. And they <laughs> are good, but you cannot beat the flavors that you're getting out of a pre-ferment like this. We could do a bigger, we could do a sponge, but now we do poolish. So... 300 grams of strong wheat flour, type 00, Manitoba flour actually, and 300 milliliter of water, so it's fairly simple. Now we're going to go in with a teaspoon of honey to dissolve in the water here. It doesn't have to be very accurate or dissolve this because this is just going to go in there and it's going to stay there a long time. So dissolve as much as you can, and then we go straight in to the flour with all our water and our honey. And then we give it a pinch of yeast. And here we are literally talking about maybe two. That's like nothing, maybe a gram of yeast. And then we mix this up until we have a sloppy mix because this is 100% hydration. It comes together really fast because of all the water. And that's all there is to it. When it's well combined like this, then we're going to cover it up and then we're going to leave it at room temperature for one hour and then in the fridge overnight. But since this is TV kitchen, we have one from yesterday. <laughs> so now, <You're> prepared. <laughs> <laughs> you have to imagine that this is day number two. And this is exactly the same mixture as we just made. And now you see how bubbly and alive it is. And it smells really yeasty and good. And that's where all that flavor comes from that you want in your dough. Now you could mix the final dough just with the poolish, and then we, you would let it cold ferment till tomorrow. Well, we are going in the middle, we are going with a two-day process. So I have now 400 milliliter of water and 700 grams of the same flour. So we totally, we have one kilo of flour and 700 milliliter of water that gives us 70% hydration. But for this, I want to add a little bit of yeast so we can finish on day number two, because that will in speed up the fermentation compared to going only with the poolish. So here we go in with eight grams of dry yeast into our 400 milliliter of water and again a teaspoon of honey and we're going to mix this up and we're going to let it bloom until we have nice foam on the top. Now our yeast got a head start and is nice and foamy on top here so we can start on our dough. First things first, that is our beautiful poolish See if I can do this in some way. I can't really show you, but it has to go into the machine, all of this. So that offers like a stronger dough or a better flavor? Stronger dough, better crust mm. and a lot of flavor. Okay. Because of, uh, it's, it's allowed to cold ferment and that's basically what you, uh, what you want. So that to a side. And now we take our yeasty water here and we add that to our Polish and then we're just going to let it spin a little bit just to break up the poolies. Otherwise, it's a little bit difficult to... Uh, so we let that spin a little bit to break it up. Just half a minute, a minute or so. And when it's nice and broken up like that, then we're going to add our 700 grams of flour. Just like that. And 25 grams of sea salt. And now we set this to knead for approximately, I set the timer for 20 minutes. It might be finished in 15, we will see, but we can see when it's nice and strong and tight, I will show you, then we know when it's finished. So we let that go for now. There we are, and as you can see, the dough is super tight and super strong. So now it's time to get it out of here. So up with this and a tiny bit of oil on our hands. We don't want much, just, you know, to, so we don't get and on the surface here, just with your hands, because we don't want the dough to get oily, but we want it not to stick too much. And now you will see... Oh, that's tight. That is super tight dough. It's really, really strong. Like, you can see it. It's crazy. But that's gluten. As I said, this is my gluten master. Yeah, it's so nice anymore. We don't need to flip and fold 20 times. Yeah, yeah. Wait. So, there we are. Now we just want to make this into a nice taut 
round ball, just massage it a little bit around here so we get the dough into sort of a nice shape. If you flip it over itself like this, it will slowly, and then with a bench scraper, we can take it for a little bit of a walk here, as it's called. <laughs> <laughs> but then it releases, you know. Yeah, it's like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> In a sense, it is. Uh. We just want to get it, you know, nice and detached here because it's 70% hydration, so it is a little bit sticky. But, as I said, now it's super tight and strong and stressed. So now, a tiny bit of oil on top of the dough here. So it doesn't dry out on the surface. Then we put a ball and we let that rest. We are not proofing or trying to make it double in size. We just want it to rest a little bit so we can shape our dough balls and then we let it rise. So see you in 1520. So let's have a look and see if it's relaxed. And look at that. <laughs> Flattened out, nice, relaxed and looking good. And look at the surface. That kind of smooth surface, you can only get that with a super good gluten network. So now it's already time to shape. And since we have 1.7 kilo of dough, then we're going with six dough balls. That should yield us six large uh, pizzas, like 30 centimeter, I would say. Down the middle we go. And then let's see if we can do it. I could weigh them out with my kitchen scales, but come on. Well, don't have to be exactly the same. We're not selling those. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we take one of these and we just fold it over itself like this. Get that back in place. Pinch it here in the bottom. Ooh, it's so soft. Why and do you pinch it in the bottom? To, to make a good uh, seal. This uh -huh. is the top of uh, the dough and that remains the top of the dough. You'll see that when we take them out, when they, they have been allowed to, uh, to rise, then we will always maintain that as the top of the dough. And they go into our nice new proofing containers. Well, I'm not overworking the dough here and just making sure that we get a nice taut round ball there. And I'm sure about my tops. I can tell you the dough feels fantastic compared to the flip Handy. and fold. Uh, yeah. nah, it's uh, so smooth and even with 70% hydration, I mean, it's very slightly sticky as you can see. It's fantastic dough. So this Let's is gonna... see if it's worth Well, the definitely, and definitely the it is. <laughs> gonna give it a tiny bit of simulina over top here. Just a little bit. That's it. And now close all of the boxes up and we leave those to double in size while we prepare some marinara sauce and some toppings. And our pizza station is all set up and ready. So let's give a check on our dough balls. Just want to let you see here. They grew definitely, but when you press it, it bounces back slowly, but leaves an indentation. If it bounces back rigorously like uh, and, and fully out, then it's not ready and then you won't be able to shape them. Then they will keep because they're too tight. So these are just perfect. There we are. Upside down, semolina on the bottom. This is fine semolina I'm using here. And it doesn't matter, you can put a lot because it will just fall off whatever is not needed. Flip it over, give it a little bit more. And now we want to start from the middle, pushing air out in the crust because that's what we want. We want to maintain a good and nice crust here. And as you noticed, I kept the top on top, as I said mm. before. Yeah, true. And I then the bubbles in there. Yeah, it's crazy good dough, and it's very strong this one compared to uh, to last time. So we want to take it a little bit further out because I don't want to have this big crust. I want to have nice. When you get to this point, the easiest part is either this, or you take it over your knuckles and you stretch it like this. That's what I have figured out. If you're not professional to this, this is a trick that makes it work for the home baker. Stretch it slowly so you don't rip the dough. But you see how strong it is? It's almost see-through, <laughs> right? You see, that's the yes. gluten network that makes it so, uh, so strong for us. And that's the beauty about the spiral mixer. So, I think that's about the size. So let's get it on our peel here. We can always pull it out a little bit. But that looks good. Then we're gonna go on with a simple marinara sauce, which is basically just crushed tomatoes, salt, olive oil, and a bit of fresh basil. Not cooked. Not cooked, just as it is. 
just mixed and crushed tomatoes there. If you can get whole San Marzano, you crush them by hand. These were chopped and then I crushed them a little bit more because they were a little bit too chunky for what we wanted here. So nice pieces of tomato. Then we go in with a little bit of finely grated parmesan and pecorino. Not too much, just a little sprinkle here over top of the tomato sauce, because this is classic margarita pizza. That's always the tester, you know. <laughs> and then fresh mozzarella. Typically, I would slice this in slices, but I figured out by watching Vito Jacopelli that then you get these big slices and then the pizza gets saggy because it sort of waters out. So cube it like this, and then you get a much better result at the end of this. He has some nice drinks, the guy. No, no, there. I have learned a lot from his channel. Yeah. He's a pizza master. He also has a million subscribers, so. <laughs> that makes sense. Trust the ones with the many subscribers. So, we are ready for the yes. oven. We are going to use our pellet grill with a pizza insert. And the stone is running now on 350 degrees Celsius. Perfect setup. I love it. It's wood fired and it gives great flavor to the dough. So, in we go. There we are. Now we let that go in there for, I don't know, maybe a minute, and then we turn it a little bit. So let's give it a bit of a turn here. It's one and a half minute in. Just to see, so you see, the backside always oh, goes a little bit faster. Yeah. Well, that looks good. And that's about done, I would say. So we give it a little bit more. No, this is perfect, crunchy, excellent. Let's close here and we put it here to cool just a tad. But that's a beautiful pizza. While that cools down, let's prepare another one. There we are, upside down again. Same procedure. Flip it over so we have our top side. And we press out all the air gets better with a little bit of training. <laughs> I want this to be a little bit bigger, actually. I fall back on this method always because gravity does it so nice for me. That's nice. Nice pizza. Well, the bottom is going to be the same. Oh, That's nice. basic, yeah. That's the basic thing. Don't overdo it. You don't want to let, let it get saggy. It has to be... Nice layer with good flavors, but not too wet, like that. And we do the same treatment with a little bit of finely grated pecorino parmesan. You always want a little bit of that in the bottom. It gives like that salty and I don't know, it's hard to explain, but the pecorino is quite salty. And then I want to go with some uh, grated uh, you could use mozzarella. This is uh, in Greece what we call kefalo radiera, whatever that means. You can uh, tell us what that means. That's more just yellow, harder and more spicy yeah. cheese. Well, it's a good melting cheese. It is hard. Excellent. So it's, yeah, yeah, it gives a lot of taste actually. So we want a good layer of that. And then we're going to go in with some air dried salami. This is not pepperoni. This is an Italian air dried uh, salami. I don't even know where it's from, but it's a nice one, a little bit spicy. So that would be, I love salami yeah, on pizza. it's excellent on It's pizza. very good. There's basically only, what else is good? Ham, prosciutto. Just some ham and uh, green pepper maybe, I don't know. That could also work. Now let's get this in the oven and then we can dress that one up. Yeah, this is looking so good. It's crunchy, but soft crumb on the inside. And for the final dressing, we're just going to add some leaves, fresh basil. From our own garden. From our own garden. Not only Super does it, aromatic. It, and that's true. Not only does it look pretty, but it also tastes fantastic. And then a drizzle of olive oil, a little bit over the crust so it gets glossy. And just a couple of sprinkles like this and there you have it a perfect pizza napolitana well i definitely wouldn't be mad if anybody put that in front of me because <laughs> they look fantastic 
So now it's time to give it a taste test and see if it's good. So let me cut out a slice here. It feels good. The dough feels perfect. That's a beautiful I mean, Saturday. <laughs> and uh, it's so nice. The crust is perfect. Now let me give this a taste. And look how it stands up. That's a really strong, good dough, even though it's thin crust, uh, thin bottom here with a nice crust. Mozzarella, basil, tomato sauce. Napolitana, baby. That dough is tons better than what we made before on the two-hour dough. That was good, but this is definitely worth the effort. It's definitely worth it to take that 10 minutes or five minutes the day before to make a poolish and then mix your dough the day after. In a later episode, we will definitely try to do it the old school way over three days with cold fermenting the whole dough also. But this is definitely levels better than what we did before. So. Buy a spiral mixer and give this a shot.